You know, it's fun making these videos. Sometimes it can be a bit of a hassle, and today is one of those days as we visit Riley Dennis, the man that virtue signals so hard that airplanes have been known to land in his back garden. So let's stop nattering and get down to it before his Adam's apple breaks free and comes to get me. I get a lot of comments across various social media platforms that go something like this. Why do you defend Muslims? They would kill you for being transgender. Except you're not transgender, Riley. You're a fucking drag queen. Try going to Saudi Arabia. They would stone you for being gay. Except you're not gay. You like women. But maybe you should go there anyway, Riley. Just stick your head in, you know? Have a little look. You're defending people who would use Sharia law to murder you. If Muslims are so great, why don't you move to the Middle East? Good fucking point. Why don't you move to the Middle East? Oh right, because they'd behead you. I don't see a problem with that. These comments are frustrating because, for one, they show a deep misunderstanding of Islam, but also they try to use queer people as an excuse to discriminate against Muslims. That wasn't discriminating against Muslims. That was you lying about being trans and gay. And I am not here for that. I'm a queer trans gay person. No, you're not. And I will happily support and defend all of my Muslim siblings. You've got Muslim siblings? How, how the fuck does that work? I refuse to be used as an excuse for people to discriminate against Muslims. Oh no. No, because that would imply you actually have a use, wouldn't it? So let's start at the beginning. Why do people believe this? Why do people think that all Muslims hate queer people? I'm no expert on this, but I'd say because of the Quran. Oh, and Sharia law. That one's, you know, that, that that's a biggie. But like I said, I'm no expert. Check out Kind Heathen and Inane Dragon. Their links are in the description and they will give you some real Islam chatter. I would argue that it's because that's the only way they're portrayed in our media. Muslims are never main characters and they're rarely protagonists. Well, let's be fair. You're you're chatting about Western media, aren't you? And even then, I direct you to Citizen Khan and Halal in the family, so lick my lefty. If you see a Muslim in a TV show or a movie, they're probably a terrorist. And if you don't know any Muslims in your everyday life, you probably only hear about them when there's a terrorist attack. Or walk past a fucking mosque. What's the matter with you, Riley? Have you not left your house or switched the TV over from CNN in fucking years? One fucking Google search, Riley. That's all it took for me to find those two shows. Fuck, I'm not gonna put the effort in if you're not gonna fucking bother. But there are 1.6 billion Muslims in this world. That's a lot of people. Way too many for them to all share the exact same beliefs and principles. Yeah, and way too many to only hear about them when there's a terrorist attack. What about every fucking Ramadan when we're urged not to eat in front of Muslims? Or during the campaigns to get certain Islamic holidays on the school calendar? Seriously, Riley, move to the Middle East. Just, just see what's cracking, you know? For instance, just like there are different denominations, of Christianity, there are various sects of Islam. The main ones are Sunni and Shia, but even within those, there are tons of further divisions. Yeah, and they like to kick the shit out of each other too, but no, 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 it's a peaceful religion. No stoning here. Thinking of Islam as a monolith would be like saying that all Catholics, Protestants, Lutherans, Baptists, and Episcopalians believe the same thing. God? Yeah. But that would be ridiculous. Plus, even though people generally associate Muslims with the Middle East, the majority of them, about 62%, live in the Asia Pacific region. Well, that's wrong, actually, because 62% of them work in the shop next door to my flat. Indonesia is the country with the largest Muslim population. But when people try to talk about what all Muslims believe, they usually reference the laws of Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, or Afghanistan. So then they are referencing the laws of those countries, not the specific sect of Islam. You just said it. The fact is, oppressive governments can use any excuse to impose their will. In Saudi Arabia, for instance, you can be jailed, tortured, or even executed for being gay or transgender. Oh, so you'd be fine there then, Riley. That doesn't mean that this is a Muslim law that all Muslims support. That's because the word Muslim is used to denote their religion. It's not a race, Riley. We're clear on that, yeah? Different Muslim countries will have different laws but share a belief in Islam. We know this, yeah? It's a horrible law, but it's a law put in place by the Saudi Arabian government, not the religion of Islam. The legal system of Saudi Arabia is based on Sharia law, which comes from Islam. It'd be kind of like if we had no separation of church and state and the Westboro Baptist Church was in charge. Riley, when someone says church and state, they aren't referring to one specific church, like my country is run by the church around the corner. You fucking idiot. Do you think they'd be very kind to gay people? Of course not, but that wouldn't represent all Christians across the globe. No, because you are comparing a handful of people to the laws of a fucking country, you fucking... How do you put your brow on in the morning, Riley? That's because Saudi Arabia's laws are largely based on Wahhabism, which is a specific sect of Islam, just like the Westboro Baptist Church's version of baptism is a sect of Christianity. And there are no laws based on the Westboro Baptist Church, whereas Saudi Arabia's laws are based on their religion. So their law, which is based 
based on their religion wants gays and trannies dead. Their religion, Riley. Remember the point of this video? And just like most Christians disagree with the Westboro Baptist Church, most Muslims disagree with Wahhabism. They can disagree with it all they want, but it's the fucking law. Sure, some Muslims might not agree with it, but Islam still wants the gays dead. And like with all things, it's complicated and nuanced and not one-sided. In Iran, for instance, homosexuality is illegal and you can be executed for it. You really have to admire the gay guys in Iran, don't you? Like, have you ever seen a piece of ass that you would actually die for? Way at the pros and cons, you know? Like, yeah, I might get executed, but fucking hell, check that out. But since the 1980s, the Iranian government has partially funded sex change operations for transgender people. And since 2012, the government requires health insurance companies to fully cover the cost of those operations. So you don't really have any fucking excuse now, do you, Riley? I mean, if you are trans, I'm just saying. Even the Middle East is funding surgery. Off you pop. But as proof that anti-queer laws are straight from Islam, people love to point to Sharia law, which they tend to think is one list of rules set forth in the Quran that all Muslims follow. Well, it's the legal system for Islam taken from the Quran, but also from Islamic scholars, whatever they are. However, Sharia law is different depending on who you ask, and it draws from both the Quran and the Sunnah, which consists of a bunch of different texts. The Sunnah are the words and actions of Muhammad, and Sharia law can be laid out in list form quite fucking easily. Because of this, different sects have different definitions of Sharia law. For some, it's praying five times a day and not drinking alcohol, but for others, it's stoning gay people to death. Oh good, so you know about that one then. Sure, there are some countries where Sharia law has no place in the courts, but there are others where it does. What you're doing is the hashtag not all Muslims, and I'm down with that. No one is saying all Muslims are the same, because it's Islam that wants the gays dead. There are several passages in the Quran that people use to justify that, but none of them explicitly say that you have to kill gay people. Alright then, let's have a wee look. We got 7, 80 to 84. For ye practice your lusts on men in preference to women, ye are indeed a people transgressing beyond bounds, and we rained down on them a shower of brimstone. Apparently, seems pretty clear. We got 26, 16 to 166. Of all the creatures in the world, will ye approach males and leave those whom Allah has created for you to be your mates? Nay, ye are a people transgressing. And then there's 4, 15 to 16. If two men among you are guilty of lewdness, punish them both. If they repent and amend, leave them alone. Oh, that's nice. You can just say it was an accident and they'll let you off. Oh, and Riley forgot 7, 81. Will ye commit abominations such as no creature ever did before you? So we got calls for a shower of stones, stick Sticking it to Allah by liking the peen, a call for punishment, and the use of the word abomination. But no, no, Islam loves the gays. They're kind of vague and open to interpretation, especially depending on how you translate them. I don't think they were all that open for interpretation, Riley. They seem pretty straightforward, for lack of a better word. However, nothing is vague about homosexuality in the Christian Bible. Oh my fuck, we can't talk about Islam without someone bringing up Christianity, can we? I'm not defending Christianity, Riley. I think they're both wank but at least one has stopped condoning the killing of those they consider infidels. Leviticus 18.22 says that it's an abomination, and Leviticus 20.13 says that if a man has sex with a man, you have to put him to death. Huh, kind of similar to some of the passages I just read from the Quran. They even use the word abomination. That's pretty direct, and yet we're not saying that all Christians believe in Leviticus law and want to kill all the gay people they see. Yeah, because there's no Christian country that supports that law. That's because there are many different interpretations of the Bible in Christianity, and many of them are peaceful and accepting of homosexuality. The same can be said for Islam. There are plenty of Muslims who have no problem with gay people, and in fact, there are gay and queer Muslims. You're getting way off point here, Riley. A comparison to a religion that has undergone a reformation just isn't going to work. There are countries that use the text of the Quran in a court of law. Muslims are not the problem, Riley. The laws of these countries are the problem, and by extension, Islam is a problem. It hasn't undergone a reformation. It is still just as violent as Catholicism once was. And just as some Christians believe that homosexuality is a sin, but you shouldn't be killed for it, the same is true for some Muslims. Riley, Muslims are fine. If you can separate Christians from Christianity, do the same for Muslims and Islam. But you can focus on the individuals as much as you want. It doesn't change the fact that Sharia law calls for the punishment of homosexuals and some countries uphold that law to a T. How can you not see that is a problem? Islam is not anti-queer any more than Christianity is. Dear fuck it, yes it is. Muslims aren't necessarily, but Islam is. Most religions are against homosexuality because it means less reproduction and organised religion is a numbers game. Unless you're using queer as the all-encompassing word for anything out of the ordinary, and Islam isn't too hot on that either. And look, if you're an atheist right now and you're sitting there thinking that all of these religions are horrible and we can't tolerate any of them, I want you to 
reconsider that. Oh, well, you changed my mind then. I'm an atheist myself, which means I'm not a huge fan of the Bible or the Quran, but I do recognize that there are many good Christians and many good Muslims. And good, good, because that means you're not a dick. I can't believe I just said that to Riley. In my experience, I found that your religion, or lack thereof, is a very bad indicator of how compassionate of a person you are. That would be a stupid thing to think. I get messages every day telling me to kill myself and calling me all sorts of anti-trans and anti-queer garbage. But because it wasn't from Muslims, that proves Islam is a religion of peace, yeah? The majority of these seem to come from online atheist communities, and I get a good amount of hate from Christians who think I'm going to hell. Oh, don't say that, Riley. That was the one place I was hoping to get some peace and quiet. But most of the time I hear from Muslims, it's a message of support and acceptance. So why do I support Muslims? Because I can recognize that the laws of a few Middle Eastern countries do not represent the views of all 1.6 billion Muslims. Fucking hell, man. Way to state the fucking obvious, Riley. What was the whole point of this? Fuck, I should have just let the video play through. Because I know that being a Muslim doesn't automatically mean being against queer people. Because there are queer Muslims and trans Muslims and gay Muslims. Are we reaching the point where you vocalize all the things that no one else feels the need to say? And because Muslims face a huge amount of discrimination in the US and Western Europe because of the actions of a militant group in the Middle East that they have nothing to do with. That's nothing, mate. You should see what happens when an Englishman meets a German. Or when you go on about white privilege and black oppression based on something that happened a hundred fucking years ago and has nothing to do with anyone anymore. I mean, be consistent at least. Riley seems to have just realized that Muslims are actually people and have their own individual outlooks, but at the same time thinks he's the first person to have realized it. Thankfully, most of us know that a person is not defined by their beliefs, even if those beliefs are based on something hateful and barbaric. Thanks for watching guys, and remember, if you're Muslim and someone pisses you off, just give them your bag and walk away.